The earth is the Lord's. I said the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. We are his people. We are also the sheep of his pasture. Therefore, we've been given a command from the book of Psalms, and that command is to enter his gates with thanksgiving. And y'all been doing a good job at that this morning. Y'all can clap for that. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his holy name, for the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations good morning Shema. Um, we have a plethora of guests today and and in this ministry I do my best as the pastor to acknowledge the guest. Most folk let their general secretary or whoever's expediting the service welcome guests. But I don't count it, I don't wanna take for granted that anyone has to come to this church to worship God when there's so many churches around the world. Let's clap for the guests that made this their choice. From YouTube, Bradenton, Bradenton, Florida, we have three guests. My Angel Ramsey, will you stand? London Fernandez and Jenny Williams. Can we clap for all of them over in this section? Online viewers, a couple, two people here from Charleston, South Carolina. Let's clap for Charleston. Kai and Sean Simmons, where are you? So we can, there they are, we're way over on this side. If they're anywhere near you, you ought to be screaming. Did I say that right? It was Kai? Good, I guessed that one, buddy. I'm gonna tell whoever's that name, I guess that. If these guests are anywhere near your section, if my members are not screaming, I hope the floor opens up and swallows you. That's the behavior of an uncircumcised Philistine. Online viewer from Miami, Florida, Javel Gerald, where are you? Javel Gerald is in the back there. A visitor brought a member. The visitor is not being acknowledged. The visitor wants her visitor to be acknowledged. But I'm going to acknowledge the visitor who invited the visitor from Eustis, Florida. Amanda Thompson, where are you? Sister Amanda's in the back holding the baby. Her guest is Sandra Waite. Where are you, Sonia? It's good, Sandra. It's good to have you. Another online viewer from Gainesville, Florida. We've been there. As a matter of fact, this ain't one visitor. This is several. So I will name them. They will stand as I'm naming them, and then we will cheer them. Cheney Jones, please stand. Melvina Johnson. <laughs> Tiffany Stallion. Myla Davis. Aero Stallion. Can we clap and applaud these? This person has just relocated to Orlando, Florida, does not have a church home, praying about one. They've been viewing us through Facebook and YouTube. Marquita Butler, where are you? Where's Marquita Butler? Right back there. Make her feel like she at home already. Now, 
I'm going to have these two people stand, but I'm going to tell you why. A third of this church, or at least more, yeah, close to a third of this church is filled this morning from one family. One family. All right, so I want my church to know y'all didn't do this. This from one family. This is from one family. I'm a real pastor. I'm from the hood, but I got a real college education. But I went from I went from pharmaceutical salesman to prophet in the Lord's church. I don't know how that happened. I went from the corner to college to the church. Y'all ain't talking to me from corner. I'm, you know, I should write a book on that. Look somebody and tell them from the corner to college to the church. I may write a book on that. But I want uh, Chevy and, Br and Bree Neal to stand first. Where are you, Chevy and Bree? Can y'all clap for both of these? And even though the family has different names through marriage, they are one name. I want the entire visiting clan and Neal family to stand in our midst on this morning so we can thank God for all of you, you, and you. I don't hear no claps going on. And you, and you. I also thank you all. I also want to, who was the woman who was tearing my floor up? Stan, you know you was dancing. What is your name? Adrian what? Lyles? You are welcome here anytime you want to come to this church. You hear me? Adrian, I enjoyed your display of love for God. I tell you, that looks sanctified. That made me dance. That's why I got up. Because she weren't stopping for nobody. She didn't care who was standing behind her on the side, who was security or praying. She cared about none of y'all. All she cared about was reaching her heavenly father. And whatever your praise was for, I pray that you get it before you get where you're going. Two people today, two great people have a birthday. One is on June 8th, who I'm about to announce. The other's on June 10th that I choose to announce last. This is one of my favorite young ladies. She is also the fine adjutant of the executive pastor. She hailed from Chi-Town. She came, joined this church after she met me. She has not missed anything since. She loves children, takes care of everybody's children, has none biologically of her own, but all these kids belong to her. None other than Sister Tannis Henderson. Happy, happy birthday. Come on, y'all, come on. The next person I'm about to mention, I now believe is the oldest male Shabbat member of our church. I thought it was Father Hope, but he has lost the race. He is not the eldest male in our church. The eldest male in our church has a birthday on June 10th. He's turning 80 years old. Brother James Lockett, stand so we can appreciate you in Jesus' name. Y'all clap better than that for 80. And looks wonderful. He is aging gracefully. And I appreciate being able to see it because that tells me there's hope. Amen. There's locket, there's hope, there's hall. I believe, I think I'm gonna write a book from the corner to college to the church. I really think I'm gonna write a book. I haven't written a book in over 10 years. I've written three. I don't sell them anymore. They might be re released at the end of the year. But uh, I go through my life in phases because once I give something attention, I have to give it my undivided attention. 
And right now my attention is to pastor in one of the greatest up and coming churches this side of heaven. Shabak is blessed because the youngest member of our church ever is in the building today. She is Madison Cleveland. I don't hear nobody. She is our youngest, y'all clap better, member. There she is, the door's opening. Madison is right there. And we should thank God for baby Madison. She's our youngest, and we're excited that we have them from three weeks to 80. Do I have any members that's older than 80? If you all stand. Any member older than 80? Oh, y'all telling the truth about yourselves now. Because some of y'all be acting 10 years older than yourself. Can you give Brother James dinner on me? He's our uh, eldest member. I just want him to. Hold on, hold on. That ain't going to work because he got a wife, so you better. I want to start no fights on nobody's birthday. Y'all clap for them, and we appreciate them. We thank God for our executive pastor and her presence this morning. We thank God for the incoming of our associate pastor, Pastor Jay. Our assistant pastor, Pastor Frank Mixon. My son, the Bishop L.K. Robinson and his co-pastor. And today, now y'all know the man I'm about to mention normally comes in here dressed like Elvis Presley, right? But he must have some special guests with him. Uh, y'all his guests? That's the only reason why he dressed like that. Y'all hear me? That's the only reason why he... You hear what I tell you now. Normally he come in here like a biker or something from... But he is God's apostle and prophet. Pastor Vertical Church, Tampa, Florida. Pastor Anthony Brown. Can y'all scream for him and scream loud? I love him to life. Did not our praise team do a splendid job on this morning? And don't we, by way of scream and applause, have the baddest Levitical, Levitical man? They love me and they know that I love them. And now let's give all glory to Jesus Christ. I said all glory. belongs to God. Y'all gave me the mic at 11.48. Y'all just remember that when I decide to take all my time today. Told y'all, y'all shout long, get on my time. I'm taking my time back. And y'all gonna sit, talk, and hallelujah and everything. Mm hmm Spiritual discretion is advised. I have chosen to rewrite my words wisely because of the influx of children that we do have. And because they are in the main sanctuary, I will be governing my words as such. But all of you that are teenagers and older, if y'all don't talk to me today, this sermon gonna hurt some of y'all. And as I preach it, I will be, and I might as well tell you, personally looking at some of your faces on purpose to see whether you have a response or not. If any of you just so happen to hang around me at any time and don't digest this sermon, this is your last day communicating with Dr. Todd Hall. And 
I meant every word that I just said. See, some of y'all think pastors need members. We want them, but let me tell you something. We were here before you got here. And we're going to be here when you leave. And that seat you occupy today that you may not occupy, someone else will soon sit in your seat. But I'm tired of people who deem themselves, brand themselves as Christians sitting in holy places acting super holy. When the truth is, most of you raised in church cause most of the hell that we're going through in church. Pastor's sons, which I'm one, daughters, y'all know what y'all did. You're the worst. Branded representation of a Christian. I never knew most Christian, most Christian parents' children have a distaste for church. And they blame it on the persona and the behavior of the church when your spirit is more nasty than the person that you're talking about. You don't like church because you tried to date someone in the church and it didn't go as far as you wanted it to go. And because of that experience, the whole church has to pay for a poor decision that you made. Then you get so hurt you want to leave your church to go somewhere else because you made who you dated your God. Look at someone, tell them, sit up straight. Are you hearing the word of God? This is the word of the Lord. If statistics are true, I'm gonna be talking like this for 35 minutes. Thank you, John. If statistics are true that 50% of all marriages don't work, then some of you in here are married but married the wrong person. And because you're a Christian, you're fighting to make what should have never happened work. Divorce is not an option because the Bible said once you get married, that's a covenant. So you are stuck with the decision that you made. Now, if we viewed, why y'all not talking now? If we view marriage according to the scripture, some of you have been married at least eight times because whoever you have sex with, you're married to. Some of you, 18 times. Some of you, over 20 times. That's male and female, A L G B T Q R S T U V W X Y Z. That you have so many things in you that you must divorce before you can ever start your new journey. I think I better let it go. I want y'all to take this whole sermon serious. Mother Slaughter, pray for me. And, I, and if I ask for prayer, that means I want it. I wrestled with this sermon. I started... Dr. Tracy studying for this message last Monday. I refused it at least every day, four times a day, because of the content. I hung out with my uh, friends and my colleagues the other night. I believe it was uh, Friday, and we went to Leesburg, and I never let people drive me. I drive myself. I let one of them drive, and they thought I was letting them drive because I didn't want to drive, but I was letting them drive because God said, I need you to feel the sermon that you're preaching by letting someone else drive. I don't know why I did that. But it solidified a great deal of my sermon.
So we have quite a bit of reading and I want at least 30 of you, or I ask the visitors to talk to me, but I need at least 30 of you to act or at least seem to be interested in the word of God. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable I see my spiritual daughter unto God which is your reasonable service verse 2 says and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I want to transition this to the Message Bible. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you and is, is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture. Oh, y'all not there. Because the church is trying to fit the culture when the culture needs to blend with the church. Now I know that disagrees with some of y'all, but Christ does not change being who he is to fit the culture. I see some disagreement, but you won't disagree when I'm finished. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. See, a culture is something you have to fit into. Mm -hmm. And it changes so often that you are never a real version of yourself. A caterpillar only changes once. It says, fit into without thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. Look at somebody and repeat that. Fit your, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize, readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you. Always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you. Develops well-formed maturity in you. And the church ought to shout amen. Before I go to 1 Kings, let me tell you why I chose Romans. Chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And the five people out of a packed congregation that talked to me, may you be blessed. I included reading Romans 12, 1 and 2 because I'm persuaded that there are those who are saved that can preach and articulate the word of God, but don't have the power to be rational. That they are infixiated, that they are fixated on being popular through preaching pitiful as a human being it's always this left side and y'all got prophetess brown over there now and still acting up i hope y'all didn't look like that in school that's why you failed they don't have the power dr brown to rationalize the word that they teach. So they will preach that the Bible says free fornication, but will never have a dialogue about sex. What the Bible has a scripture for, why you don't have a lesson for? Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about, because that's what we're going to do. 
looking for a good friend. Man, no, I, I didn't come to hear about that. That's how you got him. He didn't love your heart first. Don't let him lie. We don't love you first. We lust you, then we are persuaded to love you. Adam did not love Eve. He looked at her and automatically slept with her and then they started talking. That's why as you get older, y'all talk more and sound like brothers and sisters because the other side of you starts dying out. Now we homeboys, pump fisting. Now I did tell y'all I went from the corner to college, didn't I? This college talking now. Being rational is a valuable tool that helps us make sound decisions. Talk to me, Mike, because you're living with two women. Analyze information clearly. You're going to come out either a man or woman. That's how you're going to come out of there. See, that's rational. You keep living with monkeys, you'll eat bananas and climb trees, right? Being rational is a valuable tool that helps us make sound decisions. Analyze information clearly and avoid emotional bias. If you're not a rational thinker, you judge everything you're around. Look at my tongue, don't judge me, yeah? Theology needs to marry psychology, which just so happens to be my field of work. Theology needs to marry psychology to a certain extent because that allows a person to start making necessary changes for a better life in Christ. You can't just preach me the Bible and teach me the Bible. You have to now tell me a story that I can identify so that when I'm ready to walk out the scripture, there's a script, y'all don't hear me, that someone has written for me to follow. Now, I want nobody to get offended today. Some of y'all from the pulpit down, I would never follow you. Ever. Simply because the way you live is not rational. I need someone that I can follow that's not perfect, but at least is attempting. Tell somebody and tell them I ain't perfect, but I'm attempting to live better every day. Some of us need to make little changes. It's not even major, it's just. Look at somebody telling you, you ain't really that bad. Look at folk, they won't say it to nobody. You ain't, you ain't. For decades, did I say decades? For decades, and I've been preaching for decades, but for decades, I've heard people bash the character David in the Bible to where at one point, wish I had somebody, that when I began to fall into the fornication practice, I told God, if you can forgive David, I know you can forgive me. It worked until I found out David didn't have a fornicating problem. At all. Looking for what? Didn't he sleep with Bathsheba? That's one. Can you name another? See, that's what's wrong with people. They write your story, but don't have real characters, don't have real references because they're not rational. Y'all get up off me and let me preach today. 
I don't want to go back to the corner. I want to stay in college right now. That's all I heard about David. Is he steals other people's wives and stuff. But then I had to rationally think for two folk who will jump. What kind of God would let a man with those type of problems have the biggest book in the Bible? Most of the whole psalm is attributed to him. Chronicles is attributed to him. Samuel has him in it. Kings have him in it. With your perfect selves, what books y'all in? What can you write that if people read your life, they would follow your footsteps? Let me go on and put this out there for my five members. Perfect people should not be followed. Why? Because they do not exist. Well, Bishop, I ain't done nothing in 10 years. All right, we give it to you. You've been perfected for 10 years. Hear how I use the term. You have become perfected. But you have never been perfect. When they sell you a brand new automobile, ain't nothing wrong with that car. But have you ever bought a brand new one and the yellow light come on and you can't believe I've only had this car for two weeks. Why is this sound being made now? It's no longer new to the car dealer. It's used. So all of you that say you ain't never did nothing, don't pull off the lot. Yellow light might come on by the time you get down 17th Street. So I want to better acquaint you with David. I want to better acquaint you with David. Now my reason for saying that theology should marry psychology it will then enable the person who is rational to begin to put steps in order to become who they need to become, which is a better person in Christ. My, my, my reason for choosing David only over any other character for one person who will jump is we're so busy preaching Christ, but Christ is God. You ain't gonna find no mistakes. You see, you ain't even clap for that because you're crazy. You ain't gonna find no imperfections in Christ. No cussing, no drinking, no sin. He who knew no sin became sin, but he sinned not. There's nothing you can mimic. You got to have the mind of Christ because you may never have the life of Christ. But you got to find somebody who loves God who did their best to live the life. All I want from you, whether we're friends, associates, or if I marry you, is the best you have to offer. If the best is all you have, that's all I expect. If you make a mistake, that comes with the warranty. Now, you that ain't moving, because you're irrational. He better not ever cheat on me, but he has the capacity to cheat on you. And by the way, you have the capacity. You don't know whether you do, put my flyer on the screen. You don't know whether you do until you finish hearing me what I'm preach. You got to find out your drive. Some of you ain't gonna never sin while parked. But once your life pulls out the garage and you have to get from one place to the next, you don't know what's going to happen. You may have to call the Holy Ghost tow truck, I'm telling you. You that are watching my social media, come on and talk to me. So I want you to go to 1 Kings chapter 1. It's the whole chapter, but I'm going to chop it up 
verses 1 through 4. Tannis, because it's your birthday, I've decided I will preach. But 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And let me give you a backdrop for two of you who can communicate. This is after David did all the stuff y'all keep talking about. See, my mistakes might have a lot of scriptures, but I do have another chapter. Will you tell somebody there is another chapter to me? Uh huh. He's now mature. He's now old. He's outlived what you keep talking about. I'm still in college on my way to seminary. Hang in there. Now, King David, I didn't write it. Y'all with me? Was old and stricken in years. They covered him with clothes and he got no heat. See, I want to preach that got no heat means in every commentary, he did not physically respond sexually. Oh, y'all don't got hold again. I don't want to hear it. It's written. Wherefore, his servants who knew what y'all said his proclivity was, his servants said unto him, let there be sought for my Lord, the king, a young virgin. Oh, y'all don't like the Bible no more. Because what you do irrationally is find all the holy stories. And you forget that Jesus' great-great-great-grandmama was a harlot. But you talk about his mama being a virgin. You are biased because you're irrational. I'm saved and holy. You forgot how many joints you used to smoke, how many spliffs? You forgot you used to shack. Now all of a sudden, anybody that shack is nasty. You got nerve. I'm so much a prophet, I can call each sin in the front row if y'all try me right now. See if I'm real. And the last time you did it. Like one of you had a glass of wine this morning. In the front row. And you're crazy because right now you're saying, so what time was it? I, you paying me for that? Verse 2, wherefore his servant said unto him, let there be sought for my Lord, the king, a young virgin. I didn't snitch. Now, if you want to tell on yourself, go ahead. Because the rest of the bottle is in your room on the table. And you forgot to put the cork in it. Let us seek for him. Let's stay focused. A young virgin. And let us stand before the king. And let her cherish him. One verse says minister to him. Another one says foreplay. Another one says turn him on. And let her lie in his bosom. Y'all don't like the story. That my lord the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coasts of Israel, found Abishag, a Shunammite, brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair, or fine, cherished the king, knew what she was doing as a virgin, ministered to him, did everything to arouse him. But the king, that meant had no sexual activity. Forget it. Put it in the message Bible. Put it on my screen. 
King David grew old. The years had caught up with him. Even though they piled blankets on him, he couldn't keep warm. So a servant says, we're going to go get a young virgin for our master, the king, to be at his side and look after him. And she'll get in bed, come on, with you and arouse our master, the king. So they searched the country of Israel, most of them ravishing girls. They could find, they found Abishag, a Shunammite, brought her to the king. The girl was stunningly beautiful. She stayed at his side and looked after, come on, looked after the king. But the king did not. Oh, y'all going to get up off me in a minute? Because how you judge a Bible you don't read. Did not turn them on. It didn't say didn't turn them on. It says he did not have sex with her. First Kings, stay there. Chapter 1, go to verse 11 through 22. I'm almost finished. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying... Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign, and David our Lord knoweth it not? David is so busy being turned on, supposedly, by this Shunammite, that he doesn't know that betrayal is taking place. That his son who hates him is already celebrating his death. But David is so right now detoured by sexual activity. That he does not see that his assassination is being plotted. So the same prophet Nathan who told him the story about sleeping with Bathsheba is the same prophet Nathan who's in his life telling him there's something going on behind your back. If anyone in here is anointed or know you're chosen, you do know the proof is how many things are being done behind your back. It's best that some of them do it behind your back because you're still too thuggish for them to do it face to face. You can say in your heart right now, he arrogant because you don't know me and it can stay on your face as long as it don't come out your mouth. Because you don't know the hell the person you sit next to has been through just to be anointed. Not a preacher, not a millionaire, just... Cut the air condition on. Just annoying it. Now therefore let us come. Let me, I pray thee, let me give counsel that thou may have saved thine own life and the life of thy son Solomon. Please use your rational thinking and catch this and let me teach that prophet Nathan is walking in on the bedroom while the girl is still trying to make the king get heat look at your neighbor you won't understand this tell him I'm no longer in heat just go and tell him that right all right stay with me stay with me some of y'all the fireplace but I'm just talking about we got to call two fire trucks And if you're married, that's okay. Some of you women that, that have a husband who actually wants you sexually, you lucky. You see how they didn't clap? If I had a wife and she didn't clap, I'd trade her in for another one, I tell you right now. You better be my biggest cheerleader because there's some other pom-poms waiting to take your place. Most men are not turned on sexually by women who've had sex previously. So bear that in mind too. We don't mind folk coming behind us. 
Real men don't like coming behind nobody else. And David's story proves this for ten folk because they didn't bring a normal woman to heat him up. They brought a brand new specimen, no miles. Young, untouched, fine. And if a real man with a fornicating problem did not touch her, do you blame it on his age or on his maturity? Age does not birth discipline, maturity does. I wish I had a real church today. Verse 13, go and get thee unto the king David, say unto him, Dis not thou, my lord, O king, swear that swear to thy handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon the throne. Why then doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while the it says, While thou yet talk it, talkest there with the king, I also will come. While you're talking to the king, prophet Nathan said, I also will come and I will confirm your words, because that's what prophecy does. It's a confirmation. See, y'all, there's no need for prophecy if there are not people communicating. Rational, all right, I'll, I'll leave. then righteousness. Yeah, they acted deep. I see. I will come after verse 15. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber. And the king was very old. And Abishak the Shunammite was still there, like I told you. Still doing her thing. Doing her thing. I'm going to see if women talk while his real wife walks in. The real wife does not have time to get angry because she knows there's only a short window for her son to become king. So do I allow anger to delay what God's trying to do right now? Some of you don't know the hell you're going through. It's a distraction. And it's here because you're about to make the greatest decision of your life. I see some wounded women on the left. They're looking like... What man, I'd have killed him. You'd have killed David. You ain't that bad. A giant couldn't do it. The whole Philistinian army couldn't do it. You gonna kill who? And then Bathsheba should have stayed quiet. Ask me why. Because she took a shower outside and went to his bedroom first when he was young. She knew what she signed up for. He got her cheating. And what goes... Let me get out of here. May not catch you today. Verse 18, and now behold, Adonijah reigneth, and now my Lord King, thou knowest it not. He have slain oxen, fatted calves, sheep in abundance. He's throwing a party. And he have called all his sons of the king, Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon, your servant, he did not call. So when people are talking to everybody but you, it's because you're not called, you're chosen. And when you're chosen, you have to go through a season of not being welcomed. When you're chosen, you don't party prematurely. You wait until you've overcome all your testings and trials. And if nobody comes to your party, you don't have to pay for it because he prepares a table for you. Oh, y'all didn't like that in the presence. 
I'm almost there. It's going to get nice. Have you ever wondered, how come they don't talk to me? Why wasn't I invited? Have you ever wondered, even in your own church, why people misjudge your actions? Like there are people in here so spiritual but not rational that anything rational you say has a demon. The demon is you. That you forgot you're a human being wrapped up in flesh with a gift from God to walk through the earth, eat, sleep, drink, get married, have children. Spirits don't do that. He didn't give the angels that opportunity. Why y'all don't like being human? Why all Christians, especially women, always look straight faced? How do you keep a marriage if you can't smile? I couldn't wake up to you not past two days. And there's no way in. I FaceTime you. How you doing? Fine. Man, bye. I don't get it. I didn't marry you to add on to my confusion. I married you to become my friend. I can't say what I want to say. Nope, we got to stay in college. Now let's stay in college. And y'all are right. These people that you don't like, they've not hurt you. They're only vexing your spirit. You vex my spirit. My spirit feels. Did you get a job by the spirit? How your spirit turned off by people and nobody's turned off by you? I really don't care. That's because you're not rational. The word is irrational for two folk who will jump, which is the root word for irritate. You with me, Pastor Jay? It's going to get real good now. Verse 20. And thou, O Lord King, the eyes of all Israel is upon you. They want to see what you're going to do. That thou should have told them who shall sit on your throne of my Lord after you? They said, the people are waiting on you. Your son is already throwing the party. Before he's been approved, the people are going to say you have a sex problem because they don't know you're not responding, but they know you're in the room. Oh, yeah. See, some of y'all ain't rational right now. You come on out the spirit. Come here. Come here. They're judging you by where they heard you are. They're judging you because people said there's a virgin in there. They're judging details, but you have done no activity. Some folk don't care what you've not done. They just want enough on you to say something. Because they are irrational. They are irritants. That ain't no word. Yes, it is. Verse 20, and thou, O my Lord, O King, the eyes of all Israel is upon thee, and thou should have told them who shall sit on the throne of my Lord, the king after him. Verse 21, otherwise it shall come to pass that when my Lord, the king, shall sleep with his fathers, which means die. Y'all know that, huh? But you didn't know, didn't knew her meant sex. But you sure know other words for dying. Why you didn't say he's sleeping? Any of y'all want to sleep forever today? Oh, you know the difference, huh? You don't want to sleep with your mom and daddy who you almost lost your mind over. You miss them enough to go to sleep. Look at the, look at the spiritual folk. But people who are rational be like, Bishop, mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
Mm -mm. I'll see my mama when the Lord cracks the sky and come back. And I ain't jealous of her because the Bible said the dead shall rise first. She going to beat me up. So no. <laughs> Pray for me, Pastor Brown. I'm going to shock you in about 20 more minutes of this. I got 24 there. Otherwise, it shall come to pass, my Lord, the king shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon shall be counted as offenders. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet came in also. Now I'm going to show you this, then we're going to find more scriptures. That's all, just scriptures. Then I'm going to read my educational views. Then I'm going to holler because I'm a Pentecostal preacher. But this is what I want to say to 10 folk who will scream. David did not get a prophecy first. He got rational. Prophecy does not support spirit. You lose your donkeys like Saul did. The spirit didn't find them donkey. He had to first go looking. Oh, you and asking questions. And once he started rationalizing, the prophet said, the three donkeys that you look for are on the side of the road. Look at somebody and tell them, give God something to work with, will you? Let me quote this right now. I was going to quote it later. That which is of the flesh is flesh. You are not married to be assigned as a sexual ministry. Sex is not a ministry. It is not worship. It is a legal license to drive. I'm almost there. The prophet comes in after the conversation. That's the way the prophetic set it up. He said, you go and make this known to him. And when you have exited, I will enter and confirm the conversation. Every secular conversation, every sexual conversation is not demonic. It is a human conversation. If I got married, I've got to ask her at lunch three or four, do you like sex? And if she'd be like, no, oh, well, then we cannot get married. God sent me to pray for you. No, 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 no. I got a mother for that. I got a grandmama. I, I, no, no. Your prayers don't get me to heaven. Ceasing fornicating is how you go to heaven. Look how quiet it got. You got to stop whatever it is you're doing to go to heaven. And if you can't stop it, you got to find a way to biblically legalize it. Quiet number one, five, 12 and 29, 30. 54, 100. 110, 30, 200. So while Bathsheba, the flesh conversation is walking out, the spiritual conversation walks in, and there's no difference in the flesh conversation nor the spiritual one. The difference in the two, and let's keep it holy for three people, is the first one that walked out has slept with him. The second one has not. Somebody put out that David and Jonathan were homosexuals. That's up to you if you want to believe that. Because of the text that said that they were knitted at the soul closer, closer than a man is to a woman. I don't care what you say. 
Not this David. Not the David I'm reading about. That's my homeboy. If he was into the same sex, which would have been his prerogative, he sure should have been turned on by big boy Goliath. He should have been like, look at you. I'm going to make you my man. See, y'all don't think rational. That would have been the biggest dude he ever had. If you're from the hood, you make somebody your slave by being, I should kill you. But I'm going to let you live. Now, you see how some of your spirits are a little reserved now because you've been hostage to your non-real self for so long. God does have somebody for you, just not the you you are right now. Paper or plastic? Let me get out of here. But 1 Kings chapter 1. Going down to verse 28. Then King David answered and said, call me Bathsheba. After the prophetic left, he calls to have another rational conversation with Bathsheba. She came into the king's presence and stood before the king. I need two folk to scream on this. And that young virgin still in there. Because sometime if you want to be delivered, you got to let what turns you on stay in your presence. And let it know, I feel you, but I can't feel on you. Because I got business that I need to take care of. Oh, I'm almost there. Now I'm about to lose half the church. I'm about to lose half the church. Some of you have put sex before success. So you're only successful in sex. And that's it. That's why you're looking for men to pay your car note, buy me a house. No. No. Mm -mm. Well, I let you have my body. I let you have mine too. No, no. No. You ain't gave me nothing. No, no. No. Mm. Children supposed to come out of there, not houses. Not cars. God made that part to show you what comes out of there. Something you're going to need a house for. Something you're going to need a baby car seat for. Ain't no Mac Daddy come from down there. I hear somebody, I'm glad he ain't mine. Ditto, 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 28. King David called to Bathsheba. She came into the king's presence, stood before the king. I got some great stuff to say in a minute. The king swear and said, as the Lord liveth. That's why the girl's rubbing on him. He never told her stop. They ain't in there. As the Lord liveth. Just don't touch my lips. As the Lord liveth. That has redeemed my soul of all distress. She's still trying to get him heat. Even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Surely Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so, I will certainly do this today. Let me reword that, not from the Message Bible, from Todd Hall version of the Bible. For 10 people who will scream. He basically telling Bathsheba and the virgin Abishag who's in the room. I am only helping one of you today. 
and it's the one that I should be sleeping with, but I ain't. She's legal. You're luxury. You're not there, huh? Legal versus leisure. Leisure versus legal. Bathsheba bowed her face to the earth. Didn't even get in bed. Tell the lady move. Continue doing what you're doing. I got mine. You've been trying for a long time today. The reason why he cannot respond to you is I took care of him till he got old. Uh-oh. I drained all the lust out of my husband. Y'all need to, oh, I still can't get help. Look at folks, lust is, a, lust is a sin, it is not. It absolutely, it's not in the Bible at all. You cannot lust after your husband or sin in lusting. All right, I wasn't gonna prove this. Do me a favor, Pastor Brown. Come here with your sharp self. Can you look up the word lust in the dic dictionary, please? I don't want to act like I didn't study for days this message. Did you look up lust? Can you read it? A very strong sexual desire. A very what? Strong sexual desire. So if I'm lusting after my wife, what do I have for her? Sexual desire. No, a strong sexual desire. When I said wife, he took the word strong out. He said a sexual desire. She bowed her face to the earth, did reverence the king and said, let my Lord King David, look what she said, while he's doing this in her face, she says, live forever. Now I've got a, I have a topic, subtopic, then I got a Bible study topic for next week. My topic is simply, look at the flyer, drive. Look at somebody, make that your passenger in your car and tell them, drive here, drive. If you went, leave it up. If you went to my Facebook page anywhere and saw it or you got the uh, text blast, you would see to my right is 55 miles per hour speed limit and it says radar enforced. Can y'all see that, young people? I don't hear you. Because if anybody needs to know about drive, it's y'all over there. All y'all that sing on the praise team and jumping, it's, it's all y'all. Because the most anointed are the most horniest. That's a fact. It's all y'all. Five miles per hour. That's the speed. What? Come on, help me, preach. That's the speed. What? Radar enforced. Now, what you don't see to my far left when I approach you is the speedometer says the person driving is going 143 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. So the topic is, the series is drive, but the prophetic topic for 10 folk who scream because I'm trying to teach this is keep your eyes on the road. Look at your neighbor and tell them, keep your eyes on the road. 
I'm about to go to a nice level. And my subtopic for the future, look at somebody and be a little passionate and powerful with your conversation and tell them, handle your business. You that's from the block, business. Handle your business, partner. Handle your business. Drive. Keep your eyes on the road. What's the last one? I fought this message like never before. I promise you all. And I did, but I, 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 I have never fought a message this hard in my past 10 years. Because the content was too delicate. And because members are too fragile. What you don't want me to talk about up here, you talk about all day by text, in the car. But once a holy man of God talks about what you sexting, pictures, even feet fetishes. When I mention it, it's now unholy. But I had to submit to the spirit of God, which I now call today the spirit of truth. Just to fulfill this task for a handful of you. Let me say this uh, off the top and let me see if other people with strength and who want to really please their leader will get excited. This generation and most people who aren't strong in the area of discipline have made similar mistakes and that mistake is putting pleasure before business. As you can see, I'm now looking at everybody. I'm in my zone now. I also wrote by the hand of the Lord and the rationale of my mind, when pleasure is the priority, business will suffer the consequences. Let me say it again for those who claim they go to college, junior college, joint college of bishops. When pleasure has become the priority, business suffers the consequences. Now I need to prepare you for a serious download from the text, but I don't want y'all to go too far. Let me start off talking educationally to 10% of the church who likes educational information. Prioritizing immediate gratification, which we call pleasure, over a long time will backfire. If two people like each other, drawn to each other, they're human, they then have sexual experiences with each other often, but once they have a disagreement, they don't know how to talk themselves into alignment. That's when sex is going to turn against you because now that they don't talk to you, you can't stand them touching you. All right, I just, y'all need to go home. Can't we talk later? A real woman will say yes, but then she'll ask you, well, when will later ever come? I've been waiting six days for this conversation. But when you're prioritizing immediate gratification, which we then put in the box of pleasure over long-term goal, things backfire. And once you put pleasure before your goals, I'm gonna see who's talking, and you indulge in unhealthy choices sexually, it may be good now to you in a feeling, but the feeling is there to sabotage your health, finances, and future relationships. Thank you for your claps, I'll move on. And for some of you, thank you for your ignorance. 
We're going to move on. You're going to go back. Psychologist Sigmund Freud saw a connection between food and sex. He called it psychosexual development. Psychosexual development. I, I want to hear what Jesus said. No, hear what Bathsheba got to say first. And then let Nathan come in. See, I'm trying to help some of you. Psychologist Sigmund Freud saw a connection between food and sex, and in his theory, it was called psychosexual development. He believed the first stage of a human being's life was oral, O-R-A-L, let's move past that, centered around only the mouth as a source of pleasure, breastfeeding, sucking on pacifiers, eating food. Did I just lose any of you? Is this something your infants have not experienced? The first introduction to you. Was a kiss. Breastfeeding for those who could do it. Pacifiers in mouth. Eating soft food. If the baby liked what you was feeding it, the baby smiled. And if you stopped giving it to them and they weren't finished. Oh, see, I ain't got no parents either. All these children, all y'all act like you ain't got no kids. You probably don't. You probably just had a baby. But to all of you that understand how to raise a child, right? If that child enjoyed what was in their mouth. There was a peaceful look. But if you took what they were enjoying away from them. Talk to me some of you. They hollered. Spit up. Mess up the table. Threw something. Freud, not Todd Hall, Sigmund Freud believed unresolved issues like taking away these things could manifest in adult behavior. And before people would give in to their sexual feelings, to fight sexual feelings of pleasure, they exchanged sex for overeating, smoking, drinking. All right, still ain't got no help. Your grown self did not fornicate because you were fornicating with food. Eating things that your body did not want to take into it. You were cheating your temple. Y'all quiet now. Oh, I got somebody to learn. So that's why when folk are no longer sexually join, I don't need no man for sex. That's because you've waited yourself out of the desire. I'm not sexual. No, you're edible. You eat all the time. See how quiet they get in? Before I got married, I was a four. Now I'm a 24. Don't blame this on no marriage. I could see you had eight kids and became a 24, but one? And for some of you young people, none. Because your desire to fight the sexual feeling is now coming out in your inability to eat properly. Ain't no man touching me unless he's holy and living right. So that whole weakness shows up somewhere else. Why are you eating sweets when you are diabetic? You're fornicating. 
Look how quiet it got now. Because you ain't sleeping around, no one owes you an apology, but you own your you owe your body one. And your body, I don't hear nobody being spiritual now, is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on, you so spiritual, huh? Sex itself. Now, unless you have a medical condition, we find don't take it personal. Because some of y'all talk about, what if it's medical? See, you mad. This ain't even about weight. But you mad. Why you mad? How you so holy and mad? How you love Jesus and you cussing in your mind right now? What? I apologize to all of the females who've gotten a little uh, ticked off by rational. Sex itself. What did I say? Say that loud. You know about it, don't you? Sex itself does not distort, does not necessarily distort judgment. But it can influence the way you judge. Ain't nothing wrong with sex. But if it's the wrong sex, it will show up in your next decision. Can you think like David after you slept like David? I'm almost there. Can you handle business like David? After these three areas, I will get spiritual. Ain't nothing wrong with sex. When you look at somebody, tell them that until you have diffused all of the mysteries about that one little three letter word. For any of you that have a sex drive at all, somebody that has one shout yes. yes. I didn't say lift your hands because then they'll know who to hit on. I just said shout yes. Yeah, no, no. But shout yes. There's nothing wrong with it, but the issue is, how's your judgment afterwards? How well do you make decisions and handle business afterwards? I got a saying that I've created, 10 folk will scream, then give me 20 minutes and I'll bring it in. You are what you eat, because Freud said that, but you are what you sleep. You are what you eat and you are where you sleep. They both influence your life. Food on the body, sex in the head. All right, I won't prove it. I'll let it slide. I'll preach it somewhere else. Through sex, you have what's called emotional attachment. Let me read these three things and see if five of you talk. Sex can trigger strong emotions that cloud rational thinking, especially early in the relationship. Y'all didn't say amen over there? I'm going to keep talking over here till I get serious. When I get serious, you may look for a church. I told all of you, my eyes are watching everybody. But you will not serve leadership and act like this ain't you. Because what you do behind our backs show up in the whole church. You don't care who you serving. You care who, who you serving. Yeah. 
Emotional attachment, that's sexual. Sex can trigger some strong emotions that could make you think irrationally, especially early in the relationship. Second thing sex does is it's viewed through the hormonal changes. Sex releases hormones like oxytocin that promotes bonding and trust. And who you bond with and trust can influence your decision. So you will protect an ex-rapist. He ain't a rapist no more because the sex was good to you and you bonded with a failure and now you are arguing with your family who's trying to be rational. He touched a child two years ago. No, nah, that's still too soon. See, I ain't got no rational thinkers. That's still too soon for me. Can't babysit my children. Even if he's saved. Because there's a thing called relapse. I keep teaching y'all. Hormonal changes. Sex releases hormones like oxytocin, which then promotes bonding and trust, which can influence your decisions. The third thing sex can do, it, it gives you a desire to please. People may make choices that they wouldn't normally make just to be seen favorably by the partner that they're with. Boy, I love a healthy church. Ah, that was my Noel Jones. <sighs> but however, all three of these things can be managed. Being aware of them and taking time to think clearly before making important decisions will help. The way you can handle these three things, emotional attachments, hormonal changes, and the desire to please, is you have to be a person of rationale. Scriptures don't heal this. You got to apply scriptures to common sense. Y'all don't want me to preach this. Some of y'all know scriptures, you just ain't got no sense. And what I'm trying to tell How you gonna tell a stripper that makes all her money for her three children to stop stripping, give your life to God, and God will provide? Now, rational thinkers for three folk who would jump is God ain't paying the salary on a stripper's salary. God going to take her through the same thing he took all of us through. You're going to go through months of not having, months of thinking about going back. You're going to go through your peaks and your valleys. You're going to wish you never went to church. But if you hold on just a little while. Put 20 minutes on the clock. I'm just going to stop. If I can get some honest people from here on in, I can actually preach. We are, let me say I am, especially when I was younger, I'm like David now. But we are, when you're in a certain age, teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, then some of y'all going through menopause or menopause or pause on men. Then you get it back and you become a cougar. See, it leaves. Oh, it's getting quiet. You don't want an old man because you got to push him in the wheelchair and everything. Y'all don't want to stroll through the park together. That's when your ministry changes. Age ain't nothing but a number. He's mature. You men ain't talking because y'all like young girls like the Shunamite. That's why. So now all old people are delivered because we don't want each other.
We are, I am, hear this, more sexual than spiritual. Because of the correlation towards our infancy experience. There is still a little kid with a pacifier in his or her mouth. That's why somebody 50 or 60 can love their uh, other person, their other sex, and when they get upset with them, look like a baby, stick out their tongue. You be like, what's wrong with you? You hurt me. There is a little infant still living in all of us. You that didn't clap, you're irrational. I'm grown, but you're living like a teenager. You ain't got no house, no car. You're not grown. At your age, you should have succeeded in so many areas. What happened? See, you want to attack their sex, but we're questioning why you're not successful. People who don't achieve and have no sense are always attacking other people that's at least trying to do something. And let me talk for three screamers. If at first we don't succeed, we just going to keep on trying. What you going to do? Keep on talking. Let me also say this, Dr. Mixon, because you're going to have to clean this mess up later. And you'll talk through it Tuesday or whatever y'all doing. There is nothing wrong with sex. I'm going to say it one more time. Until some of you young want to be sanctified people. Bishop, you can't find nobody. I ain't never talked to no girl in our church. I'm not even turned on by them. Bishop, I just do my work at the church, then I go to work. Negro, if you don't like women in this church, or we don't know you got a woman at all, it's because you a secret, undercover, down low brother. That's it. Now, don't make me get real personal. Because I know you're gay. Even though I let some of y'all still minister. fool me you fooled yourself because you're gonna have to stand before a god who asked you how could you preach how could you sing how could you play and not grow off of the atmosphere that you created in my name i don't have to send you to hell you driving there on your own I don't have to send you nowhere. Your car's already headed. <sighs> That's my Noel Jones trying to come out. The Bible, 1530, wow, that's fast. The Bible itself doesn't directly refer to David having a sex issue. However... It details a specific incident where his sexual desires rose to the level that made him commit adultery with Bathsheba. Nothing was wrong with the sex. Something was wrong with the issue. Oh, y'all didn't clap. Oh, y'all lost. No, it's all right. Nothing was wrong with you having sex. Your parents upset that you didn't wait, but they didn't go off on you because you had sex. They looked at who you had sex with and said, why him? Who is he? I don't want to tell you. Tell me now, so-and-so. Are you talking about that bum on F Street that don't even have a car? Yes, ma'am, but I love him. You don't love him. You're having hormonal changes mixed up with emotional changes, mixed up with the desire to please someone you met so fast that touched you in the area you've never been touched and in the area God can't touch. Because God does not have sex with anybody.
Don't you answer. But have y'all ever had sex with God? Don't nobody act stupid now. Because I got some oil up here today to cast out demons. I literally told him, bring me some oil in case I got to cast out devils this morning. And I will. You ain't never copulated with my God. Not ever. My daddy ain't never slept with nobody. He my husband. No, the whole church is his bride, not you. How you gonna choose him after you slept with everybody? How God become last choice? Now you got so much of him, you don't want no human being ever. That sound retarded. David had a sexual issue. Dr. Mixon, he committed adultery with Bathsheba, and then God was not even fully upset with that. What made the problem worse for three folk who will jump for the next 12 fleeting moments, which I don't think I'm going to finish, is he had her husband killed. Because after he had sex, his next decision was not good. Oh, y'all didn't hear the sex was so good that it made him do something terrible. Now, if sex, y'all don't hear me, drives you in the opposite direction of success, nothing's wrong with sex. You have an issue. Look at somebody and tell them, I don't have a sex problem. I have an issue. I have an issue. The incident wasn't just about sex. It involved misuse of power. And ultimately led to murder, Uriah's death. God's total problem with David was not that he had sex with Bathsheba, but that his judgment was so bad afterwards that it went from sex to murder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Never let somebody be so physically good to you, you wanna kill them. That's just too much power. Oh, see, the mothers ain't clap on that either. I don't understand. These girls can't talk to y'all about sex cause y'all ain't even acting rational. Tell me who it is, baby. Don't y'all tell them. what y'all did. No, no. Mm -mm. Mama, when the last time you had sex? Baby, mind your business. See, you can't talk to him. When you had sex, was it good? And don't ask those kind of questions. Well, who do they go to? All of you, 45, all the way up to 80, who they go to? So while there's no mention of a general pattern, the story highlights a significant lapse in David's judgment. His self-control was very low when it came down to fulfilling his desires. Last but not least, before I fly the coop, the son that was trying to take David's place was Adonijah but he was being coached in 2 Samuel and, first, and, and in 1 King by a man named Ahithophel. Ahithophel was David's trusted advisor. Ahithophel is going behind David's back because he knows David supposedly has a weakness for sex. So that night while David is being approached sexually, Ahithophel says he never makes good decisions after a sexual event. 
So we're going to plan a takeover while he's weak. Oh, I want to preach. Second Samuel 23 verse 34. Don't turn there. Second Samuel 11 verse 3. Second Samuel chapter 15. The whole thing then reveals to us, and maybe you'll high five me on this, that Ahithophel may be going against David, getting with his son Adonijah to take over the kingdom that he was not promised because it was promised to Solomon. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. But David is not up to par. Maybe his trusted advisor, his most trusted advisor, Ahithophel, is doing this because in 2 Samuel chapter 15 and in 2 Samuel 11 verse 3, we find out that Bathsheba has a daddy called Iliam. Her father is Iliam. That means Uriah is Iliam's son-in-law. Y'all lost, right? See, some of y'all want to talk about the sex, but not how it happened, right? I want to know, you know what I did, but do you know why? Do you know the story? Tell me the details. Tell me who told you. How did they know? See, some of y'all just repeat what you heard. You don't even give it any rationale. But let me still say this for three folk who will jump. Her daddy name is Iliam. Iliam is in 2 Samuel 11 verse 3. He is mentioned in 2 Samuel 23, 34. But someone else is mentioned in 2 Samuel chapter 15, the whole chapter. Here is why he probably, probably, isogetically speaking, hypothetically rationale thinking, he probably turned against David because Ahithophel has known David for ever but Ahithophel for screamers is uh, uh, is uh, uh, is Bathsheba's grandfather so the mere fact that you slept with my grandbaby and I've known you since we were kids uh, and you killed her husband uh, I've been holding a grudge this long and because I know your proclivities uh, I'm gonna wait until you're cloudy you can't think I'm going to get in the head of your son. I'm going to invade your family. That's, that's why you got to be careful. Hear me. Not just what you eat, but where you sleep. Somebody who's learning to scream, why? Because once they don't get everything they want, they will plot some kind of diabolical plan. Because they were pleased by your physical performance like they're pleased with pizza. Cake. I don't eat dessert except donuts. No, you eat dessert. But you won't eat the donuts until they're present you're not delivered you have to keep that thing away from you now if somebody scream or jump on this i'll be happy and it's bad because you now make somebody else who wants to eat it have to not eat it just because it tempts you and it's so unfair that your life makes mine miserable. Your life makes mine uncomfortable because you can't eat a donut. Why would you bring them in the house? Because it's my house too. I dropped a girl I was dating once because she said, we going to be a vegan. I said, you gone. You are done. You wouldn't do that for me? I said, absolutely not. I don't even do it for the doctor, so you know I ain't going to do it for you. When you ask what drives you, it's essentially a person asking, what motivates you? What keeps you going? Y'all not talking, young people. 
By asking what drives you, someone is trying to understand the deeper reason behind your actions. It's a way to gauge your level of commitment. What you find meaningful. How you might fit into a particular situation. A sex drive is not bad, it's not demonic, it's not sinful. Because there's a scientific word given to it for those who will scream, it's called libido. Libido refers to a person's desire for sexual activity. The libido is where we get the word drive. Yep, one clapper, Jessica, the rest of y'all ignorant. But let me talk to you. You learning more tonight than you learned in school. It's a normal biological urge influenced by mixed emotions. Hormones like testosterone, estrogen play a key role in sex drive. We're done. Emotions, feeling happy, love, secure, boost your libido, while stress and anxiety dampens it. Physical health, overall health, makes you have healthy sex. Relationships, feeling connected emotionally close to your partner can enhance your desire for intimacy or into me, I need you to see. The is so I need you to get a, 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 a basic introduction by looking at me, touching me, but if it goes further, you need to learn how to be into me, see right because i need you to see there's more to me than this because sometimes my drive is fast yes, oh y'all i want to preach sometimes my drive is slow sometimes i just keep my car in park I'm almost done now. Most people pay more attention to the drive than they do the signs. I'm about to go to church. Oh, you that are clapping? Good morning, America. My God passed them biscuits, Hoppo. The dead has arrived. And most people are so focused on where they're going that they break all the laws getting there. And if you break the law, you will delay the arrival because the time you should have made it was already printed. 55 miles per hour will get you there by this time legally. Oh, Bishop, I didn't see you over there, so I'll hoop for you just for two minutes, but legally. Now, all of you in here that don't have any sex drive, this sermon was not fully for you, but it was for you. But all of you that have one and acting like you in neutral, you're about to get hit. Because the person that knows you is like, she a liar. This girl is a bona fide. This person over here with 28 kids not saying amen. Sex is unique to each person and can fluctuate throughout your life. It's normal to experience periods of highs. I want to reiterate something because I need at least 10 folk to jump up who's serious uh, about this. Sex is actually much better when who you're having sex with makes you happy, makes you feel love, and you feel secure. Anything outside of that is an issue. He slaps you, hold me. That's an issue. A woman slapped me hard. We ain't having no sex. I might be going to jail, she slapped me, but, but let me get out of here.
I'm sorry, I'm not slappable material. Get angry, slap a wall. Look at women doing that woman thing. He's saying he would hit a woman. I'm saying woman don't hit me. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But you was rude. Well, be rude back. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Am I right, Dr. Mixon, that most people will pay attention to the drive, not the signs? I ain't going to tell on you, but they don't pay attention to the signs. It's the signs. Somebody shout signs. All right, you should scream with me on this and you should preach, but you're too clean. The same way the spirit has signs and wonders. Sex has signs and leaves you wondering. Y'all stay with me. How could a man or woman be so bad to somebody that's so good to them? Why would you have to go outside of me if you say I'm giving you everything you had and been the best you ever needed? What is wrong? There's not a sex problem. This person has a sex issue. How many cars can you drive at once? No, I didn't say how many cars you could afford to drive. I said how many cars do you actually get behind the wheel of at one time? Let's get to the holler for Bishop because the sign should control your drive. But most people drive ignoring signs. If I get somebody to scream on this, I'm about 10 minutes from hollering. But if you scream on this, I'll be happy. Most folk only slow down when they see the law. Yeah. When I heard y'all say that you, well, 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 why do some of us frequent so many physical sins when the Bible has given us laws about this? You scared of the police more than you are of scripture? I'm going to leave y'all alone now. I'm just going to scroll all the way down. There will be times when you drive slow. There will be times that you will drive too slow. Y'all don't want to have church now? There will be times when you drive fast. There will also be times when you drive a little too fast. These young people ain't talking. Because some of them so dumb they make lefts on red. U-turns where it strictly says no U-turn. You may need to put some things in your life in reverse. Oh, thank you. They woke up. You may sometimes need to find people that you can be neutral with. Or you may have to take you, your decisions, and your sex drive and park it. On the vehicle's display, there are letters R, N, D, P, S. Reverse, neutral, drive, park. I ain't got no S because you ain't up there yet. It's called sport mode. Because some of y'all have sex for sport. It's just it's sport mode. Look how quiet it got now. What he say? And for some of you, preaching is a sport. You don't live it. 
Singing is a sport. You can't live your lyrics. For some of you, going to church is a ritual. It's a sport. Church is not what drives you. It's meeting your other vehicles you gossip with and go out on dates with on a Sunday. After this, put me in some key. In breaking the law. We're talking about driving privileges. There is normally for 10 folk a price to pay. That was six people. When you break the law by driving, this could possibly put your license or your right to drive in jeopardy. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, let me hear you now. It could also cause your license to be temporarily suspended. Y'all are missing it. Driving out of order jeopardizes a license. License gives you privileges. Uh-oh, I only got this part helping me. If your license is temporarily, temporarily suspended, you are for a season not to drive at all. You've got to find a better way of getting from where you are to where you're going. Oh, it's so quiet because y'all going to act like I'm boring you when the truth is I know several Christians who drive without a license. Four of y'all are in here right now. Suspended license. No insurance. Fake license plates. No. That dance wasn't real this morning because you know that your driving is illegal. Yeah, I looked at some of you who look like you want to fight. You're illegal. And if you borrow someone else's car under the false pretense that you got a license, you jeopardize what's theirs also. So when you go into somebody's life, don't tell them you love them. Tell them the truth. I'm not in love right now. And if you still want to drive, let's drive. But tell Tell them you are separated. That's not divorced. I ain't never going back. You ain't never left. You're separated. You can't leave separated. You can't leave separated. There's no such thing. Y'all are driving a three-wheeler car. You hear what I tell you? Ain't no such thing. If the Negro is not divorced, don't drive. They didn't like that. Sex under false pretense is a deal breaker. I'm going to say it again. I don't know why some men didn't get up because we've been lied to by y'all too. I know some women who lied to me. I found out later. I still ain't told you now. That I know you a liar. Women ain't the only one getting played. Women don't. Man, let me get out of here and preach this thing. Refusal to adhere to the law after you've been warned 
and you still drive while license suspended turns into permanent suspension. Revoked. Why y'all not talking? I'm ready to preach. And then if you're so undisciplined that you still drive while having a revoked license, the only way to stop your drive is to put you behind bars. Some of y'all are one more bad decision from lockup. You escape HIV three times. Next time, right? I wish I had folk who want to talk rational. I don't need the Holy Ghost to tell me don't touch somebody infected. My common sense said, you got AIDS? Oh, I'm praying for you. Under false pretense, you do that and not tell who you're sleeping with that you're an AIDS victim. That could become your death sentence because that is sex under false pretense. And if they die, you can now be held for murder. Look how quiet it got. Is that real? You will go to jail for murder. God is so gracious. Let's go to church. Let me hear it. E, E flat. My Lord, my God. All right. God is, no, no. God is so gracious. And if I say this and 30 of you jump, we, we will be blessed. That he has penalized us in parts. He was not drastic. He was not hard. And for some of us who will scream, he was nice to give you a warning. Let me give you. You ought to tell somebody, I'm so glad that the Lord is good. Now, don't stand up because I start hooping. I want you to stand up on the sex conversation. Because that's how we got here. There's a price for wanting so much pleasure and in having it, no longer caring about consequences. I'm going to church now. I care about what happens to me. Will you tell two or three people that around you, I care about what happens to me. No, no, the person near you ignored you, so holler across the room to wake up that person and say, I care about what happens to me. And tell them I'm so saved today that I even care about what happens to you. Tell them don't let the devil drive. Don't let the devil drive if you let him ride he'll surely want to drive don't let him ride now you that did not preach that to your neighbor your license is probably already revoked so get somebody that if you get sleepy and can drive they got a legal license to help you get where you're going and look at your neighbor and say don't let him ride Don't Let the devil ride If you let him ride He'll surely want to drive Don't let him ride Oh, y'all sound like you're sanctified Get a neighbor by the hand and say neighbor I know you've broken some laws. 
I know you've parked some places you shouldn't park. But tell them today I'm riding with you. Tell them I'm not your ride or die. I'm your ride and yet live. And tell them wherever God's trying to take us, I'm not trying to throw you off your destination. But love me enough that when I've done wrong, don't cover it. Pull me to the side and tell me, oh, neighbor, get back on the right road. Obey the signs on the road. Keep your eyes on the prize. And while you're driving, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your struggles. Some of y'all don't want to preach because you're still feeling guilty. But tell your neighbor, I've got a few struggles. And all of them ain't sexual. Some of them are about where I'm living. Some of them about what I want to do in the future. And because I've got illegal drivers talking in my ear. I don't know whether to turn left or right. But tell them I need somebody this afternoon who sees the value in me to act like a police officer turn on your lights and put on your sound tell me to pull over because i want to talk to you when you pull him over be wise enough not to be emotional you won't make another mistake if you do what you're supposed to do. Ask for your driver's license and your insurance. Your, I want to know that you are who you say you are. And I want to know that if I get down with you, that you've got me insured. Y'all ain't talking to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor if things get ugly am i insured because all i need is somebody that would tell me help is on the way shake somebody else hand and act like that's your driving partner and tell that brother or sister with power and volume say neighbor is on the way tell your neighbor i've been through situations where not only did i get pulled over but what i was driving just stopped running and at that time i had to call a friend and say can you pick me up until my vehicle is repaired some of y'all are broke down but you're still gonna make it because you got the right people in your life you ought to ask your neighbor are you the right person that i need today that if i told you the truth about me and you know that i broke some laws and you know that my license is suspended will you still open the door and say ride with me you ought to tell somebody by the end of June, we're gonna reach our destination. We must uh, obey the law. I'm almost there. We must uh, abide by the rules. Uh, what does the Bible say? Uh, it said, blessed are the feet of them that preach the gospel. And then it says to few people, uh, it said the steps of a good man uh, are ordered by the Lord. Lean uh, on somebody today and tell them I feel the drive. Uh, hey, oh, 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 hey, uh, tell your brother or sister I'm gonna be nosy now. And I wanna ask you, what's dry 
driving you? What's your passion? What do you get dressed for? What do you think about through the course of the day? What do you do when you're coming to the presence of the Lord? My drive is one day. He looked at my sin sick soul. Came down through 42 generations. They hung him high and stretched him wide. He died. But then he got up on the third day. Ascended back up to glory. Sitting on the right hand of the Father. Making intercession on my behalf. So even when the Lord would say revoke Todd's license. Jesus said no. Give him another chance. And watch him drive. You ought to tell. You ought to tell. You ought to tell. You ought to tell. Somebody next to you. You don't need all that parking space. Move over a little bit. Because I'm about to pull into this space. And get up out this car. And give God the glory he deserves. Because when I look back over my life. And I try to think things over. All of my good days. They outweigh my bad. And I won't complain. Touch a neighbor and say neighbor. You are not listening today. So let me help you catch it. If we're going to the same destination. We don't both have to drive separate cars. We could save a lot of money. We can save a lot of time. If we just carpool. So if some of y'all can find two or three people that want to see you make it. They made a new lane called the HOV for folk that are driving for more than one person. And somebody is about to get a double blessing because you ain't going by yourself. You're putting somebody else in your vehicle and you're saying, let's go. I want to tell the Lord. I want to tell the Lord. Ride on, King Jesus. feel good now I'm sorry no man cannot hinder me look at somebody else and say neighbor you can't be stopped because you're legal it's legal to dance in the presence of God it's legal to jump in the presence of God it's legal to clap in the presence of God it's legal to run around the church cause when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me so cries out so cries out so cries out I can't hear y'all y'all gonna go pop so cries out Jesus, you 
better tell five people around you. I've got desires. I've got needs. I've got wants. I may even have a fetish. But ain't nothing better than me than Jesus. Y'all lying. But I swear I'm telling the truth. Look at somebody and ask them a question and say name. Come on, y'all can learn to preach. Say name. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried? Have you tried Jesus?
Oliver. No one has to dance. Put your foot on it. That's the drummer I'm talking to. If God has not been good to you, I'm not sending you to hell. If you don't have a drive to praise, be seated or stand and gaze. But if you know several decisions you made should have made you a total wreck. You should have been irreparable. But God turned around and refurbished your life. You got 30 to 60 seconds to praise him just for giving you another chance. One, two, one. Most of you look like you're driving alone. But if you can find somebody next to you that you can carpool with and you dance and praise for them, God said, whatever you're going after, I'll make you get there in half the time you would have. God said, I'll redeem the time. I'll change the law. I'll put you in a lane where you can drive as fast as you need to go to get everything the devil stole from you. But God said that dance must be real and unique. You got 30 seconds to get what's yours back. One, two, one.
a sanctified church. With an apostolic foundation, a prophetic climate, a word-based Bible belief. very difficult message hallelujah the Lord told me to make you say four words to your neighbor I don't know where this came from it just hit me and if these words touch you in any area I'm gonna extend 30 seconds for you to either clap scream cry whatever 
But the four words, look at your neighbor and say them and see what drives them. Tell them, thy sins are forgiven. I don't care what they were. Watch it, Dr. Tracy. Miss my son Howie this morning. I'm going to tell him again. Put in your work, but God deserves his time.
Jesus. Jesus. Precious. Jesus. Everybody will say, We have nothing to Hold hands, last time. Oh, tell me. Tell me who can, who can stand be. Hallelujah. For us. And before. When we. I wish y'all were serious. Call on. I don't speak in tongues often but in private but I feel that if you have the gift with the evidence you should use it right now because somebody's getting out of trouble don't be ashamed tell me who can Stand before, stand before us, oh, when we call on that great name, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Precious, I tell you the old Shabbat. Precious Jesus. Everybody say, We have nothing Victory is mine. Yeah. We're done. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Hi, yeah, yeah. I told sin <laughs> to get thee behind. Say victory today is mine. Last time, peace is mine. Oh, Y'all yeah. leaving here with peace today. Peace is mine. Peace today is mine. You got to be able to speak for yourself. I told Hallelujah. Together. Y'all raise this. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Play softly. Hallelujah. Churches are refusing to worship like this. The whole structure of church is changing. 
bust your back. We going to fight to do it the way our ancestors did it. They praised him until blind eyes were opened. Till cancer was healed. Until deaf ears unstopped. They praised him till people got out of their wheelchairs and dropped their crutches. They even did it until those who had died and couldn't be resuscitated got up on that cooling board. If he did it before, and let me say this to some grown folk, if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. Hallelujah. Your heads bowed, eyes closed. You're always welcome to come visit this church. But come with one thing in mind. You're going to have church. And I want you to have church until one day the church has you. And you can tell people what drives you is your love for God. Your love for worship. Your love for praising him. Every day I wake up, I find a reason to put his name in a conversation. At every table that I sit, even making deals, I find a way to put his name in the conversation. And when they sign that deal in my favor, I tell them it wasn't because I spoke. It's because of whose name I spoke in. Tell me who can stand before us. Hallelujah! when we call on that great name jesus jesus chantel little i'm praying for you as you go into surgery but i'm praying god for speedy healing i don't take i don't take what doctors say that's not me i take what the potter says and he can recreate bone he can recreate marrow he can recreate anything when they went in to do surgery on my heart, they came out and said, we found nothing to do surgery on. So I know if he did it for me, hallelujah. Has the Lord done a miracle for anyone else inside this church?